Hi, I'm Li Hao. Today I'm going to share with you how to create events using Svelte Actions. So you may ask me, why do I need to create events? What, what do you mean by creating events? Well, you know, the last video we talked about how to reuse event listeners using Svelte Actions. And there's this one example that we use actions to allow us to create like a custom um, secret unlock inputs which we're going to see over here. So um, just a recap. So if you haven't seen this, you can click on the videos link over here on the top right corner. And so here's a recap on the uh, examples that we've created. So over here, we create an actions using secret combo action that takes in two parameters. One is a secret, one is a callback. So in this example, we pass, we call it use secret combo action we pass in a secret, which is a secret combo key, and then a callback, which is whenever we uh, su uh, successfully call this uh, key, in, key, like press that secret combo keys, the callback function should be called, which will do things that we want to do when it, it's called. Right. So um, nothing wrong about doing it this way, but so let me copy this over and go to the results. Um, but what if we can um, have an event listener that listens to a custom event which tells us that the secret is unlocked, right? So probably we can have like a custom event listener over here, which is like, we, so it's a custom event listener, right? So we listen to this custom event. So we can use on directive to listen to it and the event name. Uh, so for example, uh, like input, you can on um, like uh, key down, um, key press, or you can have on value uh, events listener change. But over here, we can have our custom event name that we can define ourselves, right? So this name probably would be something like, since we are using a secret combo action, it would be like secret combo achieve. And since this is an event listener, we can pass in an event uh, function. So over here, we say unlock equals true, right? So uh, which means that we don't need a callback function, right? We can call, we can have our secret uh, combo action that looks like this. And by adding this action, probably we have a custom event that's called secret combo achieve. Uh, when that event happens, the triggers, we'll call this callback function, which is to set our unlock to be true, right? If you write it this way, you, you find it, um, slightly more elegant than what we have done earlier where we have passed in a callback. Right now we can have like events listener, right? So this is what I meant by creating an event. Uh, so an action can create events. I mean, you can create events yourself, but we can use actions to create a custom event that uh, is being triggered by a custom trigger, right? So by, for example, in this case is when the combo action, uh, when, we, when you type in a combo, uh, in, in your input, right? So how do we do that? So over here, when, so in the existing code, we pass in a callback, which is being called over here. So over here is where um, we successfully triggered, I mean, we successfully press down the combo keys, which is a callback, which we will call the callback. So now we don't want to get the callback from the uh, action or uh, on the other, Instead, you want to um, dispatch a custom event. So I'm going to say element dot dispatch event new custom event, right? And the custom event can have a custom event name, which in this case is the secret combo achieved, right? And that's about it. So instead of call, passing a callback where you pass in the callback function that we call, we, we just dispatch events and you can decide whether you want to listen to it or not, right? So having a callback function pass in, you probably have to check whether um, this callback is, uh, pa is passed in, is a function and then you call it, right? Doing it this way, it, it decouples with like whether you, the need of having to pass in the function where you just dispatch events whenever you feel like it. And in this case, uh, and then the user itself will be deciding on its own whether to pass in this. And then we do this patient action, this, like it's whether the there's event listener or not, it's optional, 
so one great thing about it. Right, in this case, we, we change it this way and yeah, let's try it out. So um, like the last video, we have um, in the apps cell, we have the example and the result, which is the example would be the original code that does not create an event and the result is the one that creates an event, right? So this uh, is, um, REPL will be shared down the link in the description so that you can play around with it, right? So on the left is the example and on the right is the uh, results, which we use to create custom event. So let's see whether it works. So we're gonna press in the custom uh, combo key which is up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right, right? So up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right. Secret unlocked, right? So that's so easy, right? Yeah, so let's take a look at another example. And so just to like drill you in this like way of uh, creating custom events using actions, right? In this example, example two, we're gonna change to example two and result two, which in the same, I'm gonna create a file called result. Two dot spelt. Right, and over here, um, example two, it's what I call a triple click uh, event. Right, so over here, I can open up the console. So I, I send an on click event listener. And when I click, and I, I have to record account. So when I click, I'll in keep increments account, right? So when I click three times in quick succession, then it will be triggered like it will call a like console triple click right so how do you know that it's being clicked fast enough in succession uh, basically we set a timeout so i'm just like arbitrary uh, time in this case it's 800 milliseconds so within eight milliseconds if you haven't triggered another click then you will reset the counts back to zero right so what i do is i record this timeout id so whenever the next time i click on it i'll clear this timeout so it won't reset my count and at the same time, I create a new timeout so that I can record, I can see whether the next timeout, next click and the next, next subsequent click, whether they are within 800 milliseconds as well. So if I click once, there's no effect. If I click twice, no effect. I click one, two, three, and you see a triple click, right? So um, in, in like in elements, you don't have an event called triple click, but what? Uh, how good it is if you can, so I'll copy over the result. If you can have some, you can write something like uh, on triple click, right? What, how good is it that you can do this and you can console log triple click, right? How, how good is this to have, have this, right? So, how what can you do probably you can write an um an action right so that that's like the aim of this video you can write an action and you can apply that action on this button and once you apply that action uh amazingly it has this triple sorry, tri click triple sorry let me triple click event that you can listen to and you can pass in a callback function so that is what the action that we are going to use, that we're going to write. So I'm going to say use triple click action. So not all, so, so I'm just adding a suffix of action to this so that you know that it is an action. Uh, it's not um, a mandatory thing to name your action that ends with an action. You've got nothing to do, it's just, it just need to be a plain function and then you just can, and then you can pass it into the use directive. All right, so I'm going to call triple click action. And this will give me an button uh, element. So over here, I'm gonna copy over the code over that I've written over here, uh, over here, and over here, as well as this on click. Right, I'm just gonna paste it in. Okay, so I paste everything in, and then I need to remember to up uh, to elements that event listener click on click and when i add event listener i need to always remember to um uh, remove events listener on destroy so that you remember to clean it up so i'm gonna say il element remove event listener 
event listener is not yeah okay so yeah so you have this action and hopefully so to ha to have this triple click events you just need this triple click action that apply to the button and now when you click the button three times you get triple click yay so there you have it you create an action events using Svelte actions right so with Svelte actions you can enhance your elements so that it can dispatch any kind of events where you can listen to them right so um, I believe that if you visit Svelte REPL, uh, sorry, Svelte tutorial on actions, um, the one that they introduce about actions, which is this panel, as you can see here, you also in this example is also uh, where once you add this panel action, you magically have this uh, pen start, pen move, and pen end event which you can listen to and react to it. Right, so um, that's about it for today. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you have anything that you want to ask me about actions or anything else, or you find anything that I might have spoken wrong in this video, comment down below in the description. I will very happy to read all of them and reply to you. So once Again, uh, please subscribe to my channel so that you will receive uh, my notifications on the latest video. I believe you probably have to click on that little bell icon. Um, I don't know how to draw it, but go to my channel, click the bell icon after you subscribe so that you get the notification on the next video that's coming out. So see ya. Bye bye.